When it comes to college admissions, how much of a role should race play? That question back in the news this week. For the first time in Harvard University's history, the majority of students accepted into the incoming freshman class identify as non-white, 50.8% to be precise. But at the same time came news that the Department of Justice is investigating allegations the school is denying places to qualified Asian American students. VJ Jojo Chokolingam, now the head of missions consultant at Interview SOS, has a unique experience with this topic. An Indian American, he realized the only way that he would be accepted at med school would be to pass as black. He chronicled his experiences in his book, Almost Black, the true story of how I got into medical school by pretending to be black. VJ Joko Chokel Ingham joins me now. So you were studying statistics at the University of Chicago, and you say to yourself, I don't stand a chance with my 3.1. What did you do? Well, I shaved my head, I trimmed my eyelashes, and I decided to join the organization of black students so I could apply to medical school as a black man. I also used my middle name, Jojo. I subsequently interviewed at medical schools across the country and uh, managed to get waitlisted at Washington University and the University of Pennsylvania, then ranked the second, and th the third and fourth best medical schools in the country and got into uh, St. Louis University uh, School of Medicine, despite the fact that my pretty pitiful 3.1 GPA was dramatically lower than their average of uh, three of uh, 3.7. Now, I wanted to mention a statistic you mentioned earlier in the program, which is that the majority of, of Harvard is now a minority. And I don't think that's true. I think that's very deceptive because I think you're forgetting about the Pocahontas factor. And that is that uh, the there's a large number of people who are whiter than winter in Alaska who uh, pose as as minorities based on flimsy reasons. And uh, as a result, it skews the statistics because they know that it can improve their chances of admission. So self-reporting of statistics so, that a minority, I don't think that's necessarily the best data to use. So uh, VJ, what you're saying is that you didn't just check a box, you went full on Tootsie and there are yeah. others out there who may not, who may not adopt the personification of a particular you know, I, group, but they're, che I, they're checking I, I, the same I, box in the same way. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm an admission, independent admissions consultant. I have so many clients who, you know, they have an African American great great grandfather, their great great grandmother uh, was uh, Hispanic or something like that, and for very flimsy reasons, they call themselves minority because they know it's going to improve their chances of admissions. So we cannot ignore the Pocahontas factor when you look at that statistic that 51% of people at Harvard uh, are saying that they're. Well, all right, well, listen, let, let's because be, because. Because you are using the nickname, let's go there. You've said that what what Lincoln did vis-a-vis -vis slavery, Trump will do vis-a-vis -vis affirmative action. Explain. Um, I believe that President Trump, by appointing conservative anti-affirmative action justices and by um, uh, using the Justice Department to go after the colleges and universities, I believe that he will end affirmative action like Lincoln ended slavery. Um, as you know, uh, Bob Jones University many years ago lost its nonprofit status because of its racist policies. Uh, similarly, the, when it comes to the issue of affirmative action, the colleges and universities have pleaded guilty as charged. Uh, they publicly endorsed racial discrimination in the form of affirmative action in the university in the Fisher case. Uh, therefore, the Trump Justice Department could use uh, conserva with the Supreme change in the Supreme Court could effectively force the universities to end uh, their uh, racist affirmative action policies uh, by uh, forcing them to lose their federal funding. So, as I said, President Trump will end affirmative action like Lincoln ended slavery. And I, I want to put on the screen a pie chart that shows the breakdown of this incoming class at Harvard. And I want to ask you a question. Twenty two point two percent Asian American. How many Asians are too many Asians for the Harvard incoming class? Should there be any limit whatsoever? What if on the merits, if you go by GPA and SAT score, you could fill the entire class at Harvard with Asian Americans? Should they do so? Uh, first of all, there is a multifactorial admissions process. There are nine criteria, including grades, test scores, letters of recommendation, essays. So I'm not saying that grades and test scores should be the only consideration. Uh, the second thing is data can easily be manipulated. Uh, I'm a CFA charter holder, but from, I can, I can assess that. But the simple point is, is that as an Asian American 
it is harder to get into college or graduate school than any other racial category. In every place where the data is available, it is consistently harder for an Asian American to get in. I used the example earlier of medical school admissions where it was 50% easier to get into to medical school as an Asian American compared to an African American. So statistical data, there is no rationalization for racism. Uh, affirmative action is a system of legalized racism. Uh, it is a racial classification you... system that changes people's chances of admission to college or graduate school, and there is no justification for it. But, for but Vijay, you understand the, the you understand the point that I'm trying to make, which is to say that from the perspective of the admissions office, you know they are seeking to assemble a diverse student body, and if Asians on the merits could dominate the class. They might not want to do that because that that therefore detracts from the ability of having equal representation of all groups. You get the so final I, word as long as you make it quick. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up that point. I had the opportunity to go to UCLA, which is a school that doesn't practice affirmative action and admissions. We had a diverse class of African-Americans, Hispanics, Asian-Americans and whites with a rich educational experience without practicing racial discrimination in the form of affirmative action. So I don't want anyone to believe that r affirmative action racism is essential to a good education. Understood. VJ Jojo Chokal Ingham, by the way, Mindy Kaling's brother. I save that for the end. Thank you for being here.